G'day, Greg Miller here from the Joy of Wood. You know, I've been carving spoons for 30 years. I love it. I love teaching it as well. So this is a bit of hardwood, tough old stuff. Love a little bit of olive, but uh, it's going to make an absolutely beautiful spoon. Not quite sure where it's going yet. I've got this big heavy piece out the back here giving me options and eventually that'll all resolve itself. That's the fun thing about approaching this really creatively is uh, seeing where it ends up. So I'm going to show you how we can carve a spoon very simply just using a hook knife and a sloyd knife. Usually when I run workshops we give everybody a piece of wood like this. You design your spoon on it, you cut it out, but we've done, the, the, done all the hard work for you. We've made it really easy. So what we've got here is we make available spoon blanks. They're already cut out. And we've got three different sizes here. The large, the medium, and the small. Different woods. It's a bit of a lucky dip. You never know what you're going to get because they come in the sets of three. Nice piece here of Jarrah. I'm going to show you how we can use this, use those tools to turn this into an absolutely beautiful spoon. You'll notice along here we've got a bit of meat in the handle. That gives us options. A few examples here. It's just I love doing finials on spoons. These bits down the bottom, making them really interesting. So when you've got options, you can do the fancy stuff like that, which is a whole lot of fun. So We'll show you how we can do this using those, as I mentioned, very simple tools, the hook knife and the sloyd knife, and turn that into an absolutely beautiful spoon. Stay with us. In order to turn this into a beautiful spoon, I'm going to basically use these knives. This is a Mora 162. I like this knife. It's got two cutting edges, one on each side, so it'll cut left and it'll cut right. We're going to use that to do the hollowing of our bowl. For doing the back of the bowl and for doing all the shaping of the handle, I'm going to be using one of these Schloid knives. So that's the Mora 106 and that's the Mora 120. Just a little bit of a difference in the size and shape. They're both beautiful knives, so a bit like the industry standard really. But these days there are a lot of other beautiful knives around, but this is a really good place to start. Uh, laminated Swedish steel blade. I am going to use the 106 mostly to do that shaping of the rest of it. Okay, so the first thing to do, I always find, is to draw a circle around in there where I want that bowl to go. So I'm just going to put this down on the bench here so I can really easily draw that circle. Now that circle represents the inner part of the bowl. I'm doing a nice cooking spoon here, so I want that to be reasonably robust around there. The thing about a line is a line helps you know where you've been and where you're going, and that's what's really useful about it. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do with this is to start to hollow the bowl with the hook knife. Now these are really sharp, so how we use them is important. You want to make sure with all of these that you're never cutting towards yourself in a wildly uncontrolled manner. <laughs> so, sounds obvious, but it's amazing how often you see it. So I'm going to keep the handle here pretty much parallel with the handle there, and I'm going to sweep that across. You see those chips coming out? So I'm just getting that started. I can also cut the other way and work that across there. Now at the moment, it's just starting to create a hollow, a bit of a divot in the end. And as I go down into there, working my way, purposefully working across the grain, and then what I can start to do is start to define where that edge is. So there's my line around there. I'm going to start to cut that down near there. Once you get this started in here, it gets a whole lot easier. The hardest part is actually getting that hollow started. So I'm just working my way around. So I'm coming across towards the other side. This gets easier. And as I get deeper, 
I can swing that around and go all the way down through here, around and up the other side. Now you notice why there's none of this action. I'm using that thumb as a bit of a pivot point to help me rotate it. That's cutting beautifully. It's good to have a nice sharp knife. You can see that shiny finish on the Jarrah there. Jarrah actually makes beautiful spoons. It's nice and tough and it looks pretty cool. So, now over here, I want to take that bit in. So I'll start to very carefully roll that around. So I'm just by, I can bite in closer. See that chopped right down near my pencil line? Start to shape that around. Yeah, it just gets easier as that hole opens up. So I'm doing all of this hanging onto the handle here. Now I'm moving down towards the nose, just coming back this way a little bit. It's all in the rotation of the wrist to create that sweeping, curving path for the knife. Now there's a little bit of a ridge in the centre where this one comes here and that one comes there. We'll resolve that later on as we get closer. For the moment, I'm just working my way around to get that shape. In the green woodworking tradition, where we work with wood that's green and soft, that's where the hook knife really belongs. But I've learned we can also use it with this hard seasoned wood as well. And it's just about making sure we've got the technique right. So now, up in here, we can actually cut with the blade this direction because we're cutting down the hill towards the middle. But I'm going to stop in the centre. I'm not going to try and go this way. Then I'll be going against the grain. So now the grain direction is really important to us. And I'm just going to carve away with this. Just like this. So I've pretty much got my shape now. I'm doing these really light skimming cuts now just to take off all the facet lines in the hills. Very gentle. You can see those tiny little shavings just coming off the hills as I work my way back and forth in there. I want to make sure you don't blow out the bottom. Making a spoon is a very tactile process. You often run your fingers around. You can feel where there's a little bit of a ridge. You can go in and gently clean that bit off. Using your finger callipers, you can feel the depth there. It's very easy to make a huge chunky spoon. It's a bit trickier to make it beautifully elegant and not enormous slab of wood. I'm pretty happy with where that's going for now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change over. I'm going to use the Sloyd knife to do the next bit of it. I'm going to start doing the back of the bowl now I've got the inside done. This brings us along to some whittling skills. Really important thing is you'll find I teach that we never do those big slashing cuts like that where you are throwing away energy and you don't have as much control. You also might be putting somebody near you in danger who's wandering past. So I'm going to be using techniques that require nice and give you nice power and control. So this is a really basic one here. This is what I call the thumb push. So this thumb here, the one holding the piece of wood, that's the one providing the pressure. So that thumb is pushing. This thumb is sort of half on the blade and half on the handle. So this job, this hand, is to control the angle of the blade. And this one provides the push. So I can push on the blade if I was working out on the tip there. I can also work right back here. Now I'm going to keep, you notice I don't want to make just a flat spot. So I'm working my way around creating a series of facet cuts. You keep those thumbs connected most of the time. That will tell you whether you are using this technique right or not, keeping the thumbs together. So there's no energy thrown away. 
all the energy is being used to remove the wood right where we want it. Here's another technique. I only use my thumb, this thumb like a pivot, and that requires a little bit of a flapping elbow for the knife hand. So I'm just pivoting off there. That will take off nice chunks. I'm actually using different muscles for this job. So it's one of the nice things about using a array of knife techniques is that you're not just going to get really tired because you can change positions, change the knife action that you're using, use a different muscle set, and it gets easy. When I really want to get the shaping with lots of control, I'll go back to that thumb on thumb. So you see I'm just starting to shape that. I'm going to run my fingers around in there. I want to feel that's nice and even. Because of grain direction, I've been working this way with the knife. If I go down here, I'm going to be digging into these fibres and tear a big chunk out. So to get in there, I've actually got to turn it around so I can start to work in that way. And to get into there, it's really easy. You can do that transition from the bowl to the neck. It's really easy just to work out on the end of the blade and push the blade in there. I want to get rid of those saw marks and start to shape that around. And so I'll do a bit of that Come around the other side. So that's using, a, that's a bit of a combination between a thumb push and a bit of a pivot, isn't it? I don't mind that building up there because I'm going to actually turn around, come back the other direction and just take that out. For the moment, I'm just getting that shaped. So, around we go. It's getting that working in there. Now, I don't want the back of that to be flat. So that curve on the end actually starts right back here. So the way to do it is to take that off through there, curve that around. So when we hold it up and look at it like this, we don't want to see a big flat nose on the end. We want that curve to start here, come all the way around. So for the moment, I'm just working on the base, that curve starting back here. Take those around. And heading up towards the nose. So the profile that I'm looking for is to get that shape. So there's a bit of a ridge here still. That's going to go. Once you've established that shape where the nose is going, then what I'll do is I'll come around from the side. So now I can take this out. So we're shifting that curve around the corner. And around we go. So I can work on that. So I'm just working on this end of the spoon at the moment. I'll just show you these techniques. I'm just doing this fairly rapidly so I don't bore you to tears. Okay. So we'll just keep getting that nice shape. Big facets at the moment. Sometimes you leave them like that because it gives that nice sort of hammered look. But I could also then go in with the blade, doing lots of little facets, removing the facet lines. So we're making a curve out of a whole lot of little tiny flats. And you've got to be quite sort of agile with this. If you're really stiff, it's very hard to do this. If you just relax your hands, it's very easy to just keep turning the piece of wood, changing the angle of the knife in relation to it, and away we go. So that's just getting that bit happening there. Now, along the handle here, I'll do a bit more on there yet. I want to show you this. When you look at it, you can see the fibers in the wood running out the side that way and slightly coming in this way. That tells me if I go this direction it's probably going to take chunks out. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to use one of these power cuts. I've got my thumb around on the side of the blade, put that against my body and pull a piece of wood. See how that's digging in? See that? That's because we're going the wrong direction in relation to the grain. Let's put it on this side. So 
So I'm just using this as a way of putting a lot of power in. Now I'm using different muscles again. This, this blade is braced against here. This one controls the angle. This one pulls the piece of wood through. And with the blade on an angle that way, get those curly shavings. That's because we're slicing the wood. So when you skew the blade on an angle, so it'll actually cut it quite nicely. So that's if I want to take a great heap off. I can also come back in here with my blade, working like this. Get those big pieces out, turn it around. Now over here, where it dig is digging in, means that I have to cut that direction. So I'll turn it around, cut that way, and we've got no problems at all. So reading the grain is a really important part of using the knife. Because sometimes you say, well, it should be going this way, and the bit of wood says, no, go the other way. And that's part of that engagement that you have. It's a three-way relationship between you, the blade, and the piece of wood. Now, I just use another technique automatically then. I'll show you this one. I'm going to have that blade coming towards me. This is really, really important. This hand here does not push the knife hand. If anything, you want it pulling away. That thumb pulls it in. That way you can't slam in here and cut yourself. But you start pushing with this hand, you're in danger of giving yourself a nasty wound in there. Sometimes when there's not enough handle to hang on to, this technique is really good, especially when the blade is skewed. See, I can't cut my hand. If I let that go, it springs back. So it's a really good method, but you have to train yourself not to use this hand to push the blade. It wants to be pulling back and it's just controlling the angle. And that way I can just get in there really easily. Of course, you've got to stop and look at it periodically and check that it's even. So if you like symmetry, then you want to keep an eye on this bit. All right, so we've got a bit of shaping happening in here. Now, at the moment, that's looking fairly straight, isn't it? It's looking pretty rough. I'll just do a bit of work on this, and uh, I'll see you in a minute. Well, here we are. We're on the home straight now. How's that? Got a nice little bit of a shape happening there. So it's still a little bit rough. I can go in there and clean it up. Just a word about the neck here. To be able to go in a really tight radius there, I need to work out on the tip of the blade where it's narrower and I can do that really tight. If you're working here, it won't cut in a tight radius. So learn to use the blade. That long point is absolutely fantastic and very useful. So I haven't showed you how we've done the finial on the end here. I love doing these. That's one of my favorite finials, that one there. Uh, lots of big chunky facets. I can go in there really smooth. Now this has got lots of facet lines and things on it. If you're one of those people that likes everything to be sanded smooth, you can sand and smooth that. Or you can leave it with that nice hand hewn look. I could work over this and make the facets smaller by doing lots of little tiny ones where we've taken all the ridge lines off. Or I can leave it with nice big facets. Scrape. I reckon having it with that hand hewn look just like that. So a little bit more shaping on there. I reckon she's a winner. So that is basically how we can start with a spoon blank already cut out and carve a really nice little spoon just using the hook knife and a slide knife. Happy spoon carving. <laughs>